we're striving for something really kind of interesting and original, and, and people will people will uh, will get a kick out of watching it. They have to have a man, and he doesn't know who he is, and he needs to find out. My name is Jason Bourne. I live in Paris. And he pairs up with a civilian. I'll give you ten thousand dollars to drive me to Paris. I get the money, and I don't get hurt. That's the deal. The movie kind of follows this character, so the audience and the character that I play are kind of in the same seat. Who has a safety deposit box full of money and six passports and a gun? They're trying to figure it out as we go along. Kind of a, a new uh, blending of genres in that it's a, it is a, sort of a spy thriller, but it's really character driven. We can't stay here, it's not safe. We gotta go, we gotta go right now. A Hollywood movie that's, that's different from, from most Hollywood movies. Get everybody up. I want them all activated. Do it now! He pretty quickly discovers that he has some skills that normal people don't have. I can tell you the license plate numbers of all six cars outside. I can tell you the guy sitting up at the counter weighs 215 pounds and knows how to handle himself. I know the best place to look for a gun is the cab of the gray truck outside. Now, why would I know that? While I was reading the script, I was amazed. I was like, oh, OK, ooh, ah, ooh. This is a story about two people who are essentially on the run, and one of them has no idea who he is, and there are people out to kill them every step of the way. Come on, folks. It's working. I want born in a body bag by sundown. He's trained, conditioned, built to disappear. We've got a very interesting new director uh, for this kind of movie. Here we go, and action! The reason I really wanted to do it was uh, because of Doug and, uh, and his sensibility. Certainly, Swingers and Go are really terrific movies, and he has a real visual style. You know, as soon as I was done with Go, and everybody was like, what do you want to do next? I'm like, OK, I want to do The Born Identity. By having Doug to do this project, who comes from more of an independent film background, it adds some edge to it. He's the one who made the deal in order to bring it to the screen, because people had pursued this project for a long time. It is a title that we all know. The Born Identity is a book that's been around quite a long time. When Doug and Tony Gilroy sat down to construct the script, they brought a whole fresh look to it. This film is very, very different from the book. I wanted to update the genre of the spy movie. He's got my picture. Right, this is so, no. so exists. No, 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 no. Where do you get this? How do you Rick, get my Rick, picture? We have the basic characters and the basic uh, plot, but it's a much different journey. Doug said he wanted the whole movie, with the exception of some stuff in Zurich and Italy, to take place in Paris. The entire feeling is, is different from shooting a movie in the States. Uh, I play Jason Bourne. I have no idea who I am. I have amnesia. And it just starts with me getting pulled out of the water with two bullet holes in my back, and I don't really have much to go on. Who are you? What's your name? What's your name? I don't know. Oh, God. Marie is a gypsy, I think. Um, she has all these plans. She wants to go to America. She wants to have a visa. I lose my apartment, OK? That means no address, no phone, no money, no time. I still have no visa. Miss Kreutz, please, I'm going to And so when she meets Bourne and gets offered a lot of money to drive him to Paris, it seems like, like a good option. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. None of it. What? Like, amnesia? Yes. She has the option to either leave or go with him, and she doesn't really have any place or anybody waiting for her, so, and she's curious. Last chance, Marie. He's kind of pushed by Marie to offer her to come to see his apartment that he doesn't remember and he doesn't know what to find there. What is it? Something wrong? It's a character that throughout the film doesn't say very much, but he's pretty crucial to it. He's on Matt Damon's tail, so he, tr he spends the whole movie tracking him down. Ultimately, I just put a pair of glasses on and pose around. <laughs> Action! 
Is that it? Uh, a little overacting there. <laughs> it's a sort of horror nightmare that we can all relate to the idea of waking up one day and not knowing who we are and how we got there and, you know, and, and for some reason people seriously on your tail and wanting to put you out of the picture. What's most important, in, obviously, in this kind of movie is the casting, the two major roles. Those are the two characters that we're going to follow all the way through the picture. In Matt Damon, we have a wonderful young actor who uh, is also exploring new ground. I've never really done anything like this. Matt is very focused, very serious about the work he does, which I really appreciate. If he sees you taking chances, he'll take chances. And he really becomes a, a creative partner and a collaborator. He's playing a guy who is pretty tightly wound and uh, doesn't know why. Things is down. He's a machine, basically. There's a lot of depth to Matt Damon. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the eyes, and I think it's really important to this character because it's not just an action part. You have to see something in this character's eyes, and I think Matt really has that. Casting uh, Franca Patente, who's a great German actress, in the lead female role was another great idea on Doug's part. We do know that she can be an action character from Run, Lola, Run. Franca was actually uh, who I had in mind when we were writing the screenplay. What Franca brings is a kind of weight and star power in a way that you don't normally see in, in an American film. Jason! This, this is blown. It's a reaction how you and I, how everybody would react, like, what is going on? I don't understand. In order not to die, she has to be brave and, and do things that she normally wouldn't do. This guy at the front desk was smiling at me, so I thought, you know, all this trouble, maybe it's easier to just ask for them. Do you have the bill? Maybe a photocopy. You just asked for it? What's interesting about Franca is, just like Matt, she can do the action thing, but she can also do the dramatic side of things. Marie. Get away. Marie. Stop, Marie, Get stop right there. Me. Stop right oh, there. What? what are you going to do, kill me? Marie. Is that what's next? Listen, stay calm. He looks out for her. He doesn't want her to get hurt. And uh, she feels protected. And I think that's adding to an attraction that's definitely there. You already cleaned the room? I wiped the whole place down for fingerprints. Can I walk around or is it gonna leave any footprints? You want this relationship to work out and you believe in the decency of these people uh, despite the fact that they're in these extraordinary circumstances. He's not really in a position to have a love story when he's leaving a trail of bodies behind him. If we stay here, we die. When you put those two characters swimming in this thriller action genre, you have an unusual combination. We should never have come here. I, these children, if... That's not gonna happen. Everything we're trying to do is kind of in that vein to, to really take the audience on a ride that feels very real and feels like they, they're on the edge of their seats. I had about three months to do you know, martial arts stuff and weapons training and boxing and all this stuff that uh, was really fun to, uh, to learn how to do. It was like a summer school and, you know, assassin training. You know, that was a, a real commitment on Matt's part to do that, just to physically bring out the dark side of Jason Bourne. That's the problem, off-balance right there. Yeah, Alright, so if we step back, exactly. yeah. Nick Powell's really good at that. He did Braveheart and Gladiator and these movies that had really compelling battle sequences and fight sequences. Me and Nick probably worked with about seven stunt guys for a month on one fight in particular. Okay. Set yourself up for that? Yeah, yeah. Okay.
It always looks violent in movies, but the, the key in, in any of these kind of scenes is that, you know, no one gets hurt. You make it look as real as possible. But you choreograph it kind of like a dance and, and then, then put the intent in and it all cuts together. I mean, movie audiences are so smart that they'll know if, the, if it's the actor doing it or if it's cutting away to a wide shot of, you know, some other guy who's, you know, much better at it, you know. So the hope was that we'd, we'd get it to a point where I could do as, as much of it as, as I could and I ended up doing, doing just about all of it. I don't usually fight in movies different than kind of a standard Hollywood action movie. I think the most grueling thing will probably be the, uh, the climbing down the face of the building. We talk a lot about action in movies that really works. We talked about the car chase and bullet. You're kind of with the character, and you and you're, you. It's believable. It's not this over-the-top kind of stuff. So the action really is compelling. We got a bump coming up. <laughs> Matt, you know what? Let's do on this one. You cock it, but keep it held held between the two hands here. Okay. Doug, somebody who comes from this indie background who just throws a camera on his shoulder, and at the end of the day, if it's lit, he'll shoot it. I think what uh, Doug's style is bringing to the movie is that kind of rough-edged, very energetic feel, and it comes from uh, his operating the camera a lot of the time, and, and what he sees and what he feels. He's sort of seeing the movie in an unusual way. That looked pretty cool. That's a new way of doing it for me. If you're not shooting, there's like a wall of people between you and the actor, and if you're shooting, it's they're there, you're right next to them, and it's, it's just a more intimate connection. He's very brave. For the first time, I worked with a director who would operate the camera as well. He was they're really close, watching us, not behind some blurry monitor, but looking through the lens. And I really appreciated that. We shot stuff on a boat where he just put the camera on his shoulder, and Oliver, the DP, said, uh, said, Doug, we don't have enough light. You know, he, he has his light meter out, and the sun had basically gone down. And Doug said, you know, there's still a little bit of light there. I can shoot maybe a silhouette shot will come out. And we did two takes, and sure enough, one of them was actually usable. He's like a kid in his backyard making a movie, and when there's literally absolutely no chance he can keep filming, then he takes the camera off his shoulder. When you have Doug who's operating, he's not going to miss anything. He knows if it works, he's framing it. He, he knows what's in and what isn't, and then what's captured and what isn't. You come to there, okay. and you're looking back. His filming style and the way he sets up his shots, he wants the audience to come away with the impression that just as Jason Bourne is finding out who he is, the audience is going to be finding out who he is at the same time. There's a lot of really original little twists in this movie. It's a complicated, brainy thriller. It's putting the pieces together of, you know, sort of international puzzle, as opposed to just sort of whipping out a gun and killing people. Ultimately, it's just a very interesting premise. A guy who comes around, doesn't know who he is, where he is, why he is, and there's people after him. It's got very interesting characters, and you're really following the characters against the background of it being a, a, a spy thriller. At the end of the day, this movie should be really entertaining for people. We want people to go, man, how, you know, you seen that thing? That is a cool movie. Stay here, we die. You die. You die. 